my name's David, David Hay. I'm a retired engineer and I started growing carnivorous plants some eight, six or eight years ago. And it seems now to have escalated to three greenhouses with a desire for a fourth one. I grow Saracenias, Drosseras and Venus flytraps. I have a variety of different types of flytraps and different types of other plants that, that attract insects and consume them for the nitrogen content. When I started out, I was having problems growing them and they were dying on me, but I persisted until I did establish quite a collection of plants, which has led me to where we are at this present time. The best piece of advice I can give as regards growing these plants is to make sure it's a nutrient-free base, which needs really to be peat directly from the bogs, and also they need water that is essentially rainwater, reverse osmosis water, and at a push you could probably use boil tap water as they are acidic soil type loving plants. This plant is called a Venus flytrap. Many people try growing them, even I had bad results when I first tried to grow these things. There's little points that you really need to know when growing them. One is the plant actually will reproduce from the base which has got a rhizome at the bottom of and if you've more than seven leaves you've generally got another plant growing up alongside it. As it progresses through the year early on in the spring and late summer it develops leaves which are close to the soil or the well in this case peat the long, the long um, leaves actually are developed in the summer months. As the year progresses, they will die off a little and the plant actually will recede to go into a dormancy mode in the winter. Now people think these are a tropical plant, but they're not a tropical plant. They actually, round about November, need standing outside to get the cold, to give them the dormancy they need and round about March, provided they're kept wet in a sheltered place, it should re-emerge. Actually, I've still got the early leaves on, but these long leaves are the summer ones, which gradually will die back. But the peat base has to be slightly acidic and it has to have no nutrients in it whatsoever. As long as it's kept wet in a sunny position, preferably near an open window where it can catch the bugs as they come and go, the plant will be quite happy to be like that during the summer months but it really does need standing out during the winter months. Now this plant only grows in one area and around about a 20 mile radius of a place in the North Carolinas called Wilmington and I believe it grows nowhere else. It is now an endangered plant in the wild and you can be prosecuted for taking them as they are becoming a rare plant. Right, well this plant is called a Saracenia and it catches insects by lining its tube and the hood with moisture that is sweet with nectar and the plants actually catch the insects by enticing them into the tubes. In the tubes themselves there's downward pointing hairs which prevent the insect from cl climbing back out again and this is how these plants actually collect the nutrients they need for survival. They can survive without the nutrients, but it's much more beneficial if they can get extra nutrients as they always grow in poor ground. The flower stalk, as it appears, has a hood underneath it, and the, it's rather like an umbrella. The petals hang over the radius of the umbrella all the way around, there's five of them, and the insects have to brush past little points on the tips of the umbrella to get in and out of the plant. That is how the plant is fertilised because the hood actually traps the pollen from the plant inside and then the insects go in and carry the pollen. As they appear through the, the corners of the hood, they actually fertilise the plant. And this is an example of the plants that I grow. Well, it's one example, I wish there was more. <laughs> right, this is a young Drosera plant. Now these plants actually attract insects onto their little sticky tentacles. They mainly catch tiny things like fungus gnat, which people have a lot of a problem with. And also, they also grow in boggy areas, but they come from South Africa. 
but these are known as Drosera capensis and they are common in South Africa. Right, well, I, I'm not a professional, I'm an amateur grower of these plants and I think now there's quite an interest in these plants developing by many different people throughout the world, especially as now we are looking to sort of save the ecology of the planet and all, a lot of people do have difficulty in maintaining them to keep them alive. But there are just basic rules which you just need to follow. Uh, what a lot of the plant sellers set don't tell you is that these plants will in the autumn start to recede and look in a sorry state but they are not dying as a lot of people seem to think and they throw them out but really what they need at the back end of the year around about November they need to be stood outside a little bit of water and even some I've known of mine are frozen but they have come back again so really if you just look after them and rainwater mainly boil tap water if not and there are sort of other varieties of water but you just need to make sure it's got no mineral content i've never tried growing them with mineral content all my water all my plants i have just grown using trapped rainwater so further than that i cannot give you any more advice on that one it's just common sense on how to grow these things now this lady has been very very pushy with me this morning and I've finished up with a lot of photography that I didn't wish to get involved with. But here we are at the, at the end of the video. <laughs>